Good afternoon, and welcome to Google for Startups Accelerator for Black Founders Virtual Demo Day. My name is Jason Scott, and I head up Google's startup developer ecosystem here in the United States, and I'm currently based in New York. After 10 weeks, we have made it to the end of our program, and it has been quite the journey for our founders as they have tackled major projects around product design and UX, technical infrastructure, data and machine learning, and growth marketing, expansion, and sales, as well as, of course, people and leadership. In a moment, we will allow each of our founders the opportunity to quickly present to you more about each of their amazingly impactful companies and their teams. But before we get started with Demo Day, let's take a quick short peek back at the digital journey that our founders have been on over the last two months. Welcome to the program. It's finally here. It's crazy. Um, so Google for Startups Accelerator, the first ever Black Founders Accelerator program. Clerky, the way I would think about it is a debt relief and a marketplace that pretty much focuses on helping people that are in deep debt get out of debt. I'm based in Los Angeles and my company is sort of based in Las Vegas as well. Um, we aim to use technology to um, help hospitals run better for everyone. Today I'm based in Dallas, Texas. So we, we aim to use um, data analytics and some of the machine learning and AI to help companies um, really deal with and identify systemic uh, inequities that exist within their workplace. Today I'm based in Durham, North Carolina. Um, we aim to use automated loan origination technology to increase access to affordable capital for small businesses across the country. Today, I'm based in Memphis, Tennessee, um, and that's where I'm usually based. Um, we aim to use technology to help healthcare providers find and book rides for patients with special needs. We are based in Dallas, Texas, uh, by the way, of McKinney. Yes. Uh, we aim to use tech to really unlock the potential in what many would consider to be a very antiquated um, industry. We're a mental health tech company, and what we do is we provide mental health support over text message to uh, youth to empower them to heal from trauma. We're actually based now in Austin, Texas. Um, we aim to use technology to connect online students and non-traditional students with critical campus student supports. So things like tutors and advisors and counselors. Today, I'm actually in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, but we're based in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, we aim to use data to inform insureds, their brokers, and insurers exactly when policyholders should be using their property and casualty insurance. We're based in San Francisco. Uh, we aim to use technology to help local businesses uh, attract customers and retain them. These are your dedicated mentors. So each of you obviously have dedicated mentors throughout the whole program. Um, the way I described it to them, which I'll also describe to you, is they are meant to be your co-pilots throughout this entire program and really help you connect to the right people, the right resources, the right folks around Google. You're all joining a global community and, and of course couldn't have everyone on this call. I know a lot of you potentially are developing products that, that obviously are relevant outside of the US and you're joining a large global family um, of, of Accelerator alumni, Google mentors, et cetera. So definitely take advantage of that. I tell people take advantage of anything that Google's going to give you um, because we want you to be successful. And I'm excited to introduce you to our amazing roster of guest speakers joining us from inside and outside of Google. You should have received your swag boxes. Um, if you have them, feel free to, to show them. Hey, this is tight right here. Oh, Look at that. That's cool. Rube is cute. We're excited today to have Peter Norvik joining us. Hey, Peter, it's great to meet you. Thanks for taking the time to uh, to listen to our ideas and provide your feedback and perspective. Given a specific customer that spends over $100 a month on something like DoorDash, what is the most likely path to convert them to a loyal customer? Our proprietary benchmarking tool, the Canary Score, provides an all-in-one metric that empowers DEI leaders. Companies mostly internally, they go by uh, uh, hiring and retention metrics, by your promotion metrics, by uh, internal questionnaires. 
Do I build my own model? Do I maybe use something that's off the shelf? Am I even using AI in the right way? Just finished our Google Startup Mentor session and it was helpful as always. We spent the session talking about how we can make best use of Google's AI platform and other tools for our service and did some troubleshooting. Hey everyone, congratulations. Uh, it's been great to get to know some of you guys over the last few weeks. You've reached an important milestone today and I'm excited to see the next step in your startup journey and to see how all of your companies will continue to evolve and grow. Congratulations and good luck on this week's demo day. I wish you all the best. Uh, you have so many exciting products and services to share with us. So let the games begin. Congratulations to all of you. What you've accomplished so far is already amazing. I can't wait to hear more about your future endeavors. I wish you all the success in the world and thank you again for everything that you're doing. We are extremely proud of you. Congratulations! Suffice to say, it's been an amazing 10 weeks. But you've heard enough from me. Let's get on to our founders. In just a few weeks, we received over a thousand applications for the first Google for Startups Accelerator for Black Founders program. And we are happy to have you here from the 12 companies that were selected for this inaugural cohort. Let's get started. As a reminder, each founder will be given four and a half minutes to present their company. And then we will have time for one question from the audience per company. First up, it's my pleasure to introduce Four Degrees, an AI-enabled customer relationship management platform for professional services such as banking, consulting, and real estate. Without further ado, off to Four Degrees to tell you more. Hi, I'm Ablorde, the co-founder and CEO of Four Degrees. We are a relationship intelligence product built for relationship-driven industries. Imagine superhuman, but built for a team's professional network. We're tackling this problem because we've experienced it firsthand. Before building this company, my co-founder and I met while working in private investing at Pritzker Group, and then each worked in consulting at McKinsey and Bain and & Company. And across those experiences, we wasted a ton of time wrangling spreadsheets of contacts and even building internal tools ourselves to answer really simple questions about our relationship network. Despite the critical role that relationships played in these firms' success, relationships with Fortune 500 executives and CEOs that led to millions of dollars of opportunity, we were stuck using transactional sales-based products to manage relationships. We all start by trying to organize our team's network and products like LinkedIn and Salesforce and quickly realize they're either too noisy or designed for a sales funnel. But then we resort to the products we use when there are no good options, spreadsheets and email. These band-aid solutions are either highly manual, so you waste a ton of valuable time, they're incomplete, they're error prone, they're very noisy, full of irrelevant notifications and fake connections, or they leave a ton of opportunity on the table, they're static. They give you no real insight as to how to use your network to accomplish your goals. And this isn't at all restricted to the world of private investing and consulting. Relationships are the critical asset that underpin a large swath of our economy. They determine who we hire, who we sell to, who we invest in, what referrals we get, what opportunities we get access to. And this is particularly true of services-based industries, consulting, investing, investment banking, recruiting, in these businesses, the relationship network that you have is even more important than the transaction funnel you build. And so we set out to build the product we wish we had, a true relationship intelligence system. Our product plugs into communication channels and other tools your team uses. We construct a dynamic view of your team's network, and then we combine that with our technology to make your relationships work for you. Our customers include some of the largest professional services firms in the world, and they use us to identify connections to the people and the companies that they're interested in engaging with. We not only identify those connections, but critically identify who on the team knows them and how strongly they are connected. They get intelligent alerts about what's happening in that network. So when people have published content or changed jobs or shown up in the news, or if you're flying to their city, and they get recommendations as to how to use that network to accomplish their goals. For instance, identifying Paladins, hiring a front-end software engineer, and then surfacing the relevant people who match that request. To pull this off, we needed to fuse a strong understanding of relationships-driven industries with deep technical expertise to pull insight out of communications data. As CEO, I've spent my career in those industries and understand them and our customers deeply. 
My co-founder not only has that experience, but is highly technical. He's a published author in the field of applied machine learning and leads our engineering and data science efforts. Around us, we've constructed a strong and deeply technical team of engineers, data scientists, and designers. And over the past four months, have also begun to scale our go-to-market team. We entered the Google for Startups Accelerator focused on three key objectives. The first was to open up the top of the funnel by generating an increased number of demos with customers that met our qualified prospect criteria. The second was to grow our average contract size by generating and advancing in conversations with larger customers. And the last was to make our product onboarding more product led. Historically, I or a member of our team have personally onboarded every single customer. It's been phenomenal for learning. But we needed to set a foundation to scale our growth efforts. And over the past three months, we've made phenomenal progress against each of these. We scaled the number of monthly leads we receive by over 50%. We've added 12 new prospects to the top of our funnel worth over 30K of ACV apiece, with two already at the contracting stage. And we've built two new self-service onboarding tracks, allowing customers to go from registered to sticky, engaged usage with a minimum amount of support from our team. Our progress against those three objectives will only continue to fuel our growth. We grew our SaaS revenues by three times last year, and we're on pace to do so again this year. And in the same way that there's a generation of tools layering on top of Salesforce like Gong and Outreach and providing revenue intelligence, we see the same opportunity to layer on top of transactions and communications data and provide relationship intelligence. And with a 10x better understanding of who knows who in the world, we see an opportunity to build the world's next professional graph. Thank you. Thank you, Four Degrees team, for a presentation. And we have time for one question from the audience. Um, the question I would like to ask you is, how do you differentiate versus existing software people use to manage deals and contacts? The vast majority of potential customers we've spoken with primarily do this work in spreadsheets and email, to be honest. Um, to the extent people have a solution in place for this today, it tends to be an existing CRM system. Think Salesforce, HubSpot, Sugar CRM. And these products are phenomenal at what they do. They are phenomenal at managing a transaction process. What these products aren't designed for are long-term relationships with people who aren't necessarily leads to fall into your funnel. For instance, my relationship with Jason Scott isn't one that I'm trying to push him down a transaction funnel. I'm not trying to sell Jason anything, but I do see him as being a critically important part of our team's current and future relationship network. I want to make sure that we're staying engaged with Jason over time. Uh, and yet Salesforce and HubSpot aren't built to house that relationship and help me do anything to advance and strengthen that. And so where four degrees comes into the picture is we can actually layer on top of existing transactional systems like a Salesforce and a HubSpot and provide a lot of that relationship connectivity, the news and the alerting capabilities you saw before, the capability of searching through the team's network and understanding connection paths and strengths are ways that we differentiate versus those existing systems today. Thank you to the Four Degrees team for a great presentation. Up next, we have Clerky, based in San Francisco. Clerky is a debt relief marketplace that helps people get out of debt through automation. On to the Clerky team. 669 billion, that's a big number. Take a second to digest this number. 669 billion, that's the total amount of debt that was in delinquency last year. And this is a big problem that's impacting millions of Americans. And frankly, I was once one of them. My name is Gia Saad. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Clerky, a debt financial automation platform that helps people get out of debt. After spending years at McKinsey, working with some of the big banks on this specific problems, two things became very, very apparent to us. The first one is that this is a big problem for the bank as much as it is for the users. This is something that impacts their bottom line, their operations, and their relationships with their customers. The second problem is that this issue is not one that the banks can solve by themselves. Every time we try to deploy and craft some of these solutions within the banks, we'd be confronted with systemic issues stemming from regulatory hurdles to legacy system complexities that precluded us from deploying the solutions that they needed. And we looked around in the market to try to find a partner to try to solve some of these problems. And long behold, we couldn't find any. And so we started asking ourselves, what if we could quit our job and harness the power of digital platforms to automate and solve debt problems at scale? And that's exactly what we did. 
Meet Clerky. It's a debt financial automation platform that helps users get out of debt through deep integration and machine learning. We broker your relationship with your lender, thereby empowering you to make smarter financial decisions that gets you out of debt a lot quicker and that takes away the complexity of debt management. The way it works is pretty simple. You come in, you connect your accounts, and soon Clerky starts helping you automate your debt management, taking out the complexity out of your payments, your due dates, and your interest rates. And if you can't make your payments, it exposes you to the bespoke programs that the banks may offer to help you get out of debt a lot quicker. We've made a lot of progress since our launch. And coming out of beta last year, since then, we serve over 970,000 users, have managed 12 billion in debt and more, have facilitated over a billion dollars worth of payments, and have helped users settle over $140 million in debt. But we still have a lot of work to be done. You gotta keep in mind, there's over 15 trillion in debt in the US. And meanwhile, 123 million struggling Americans are trying to make ends meet every month, living paycheck to paycheck. And the result of that is that 669 billion that we were talking about at the beginning. If anyone can solve and work out some of these loans, that's a $60 billion opportunity. And we think the market is right, particularly with COVID. Suddenly, many Americans are finding themselves out of work. And that means a lot of struggling Americans needing our help. We have the team to go out and execute this mission, particularly when you consider the fact that we've been working with the banks directly on these problems. And we have deep expertise from previous startups such as NerdWallet and existing FinTech leaders like NewBank. So if you're serious about trying to help consumers get out of debt, join us and feel free to reach out anytime. And a great job to the Clerky team for the presentation. Again, one, time for one question from the audience. This time, I'd like to ask you all, for those less familiar with the space you're in, can you talk a little bit more about the business model and how you're exactly making money? The way we make money is pretty simple. Um, we actually take a cut of the proceeds each time we help someone get out of debt or each time we help them work out of debt with their creditors. Thank you, Clerky. Up next, we have Florence Technologies out of Los Angeles, California. Florence is a demand labor marketplace for healthcare organizations and an integrated accredited degree granting online nursing school. Florence, to tell us more. My name is Dante Tolbert and I'm CEO of Florence Technologies. Florence is a demand marketplace for healthcare professionals. We make it fast and easy for the healthcare system to match labor to census. We're solving an everyday problem for the health system. The pandemic has brought short staffing in hospitals to the forefront of all of our minds. Even with advances in clinical medicine, hospitals still use a combination of guesswork, paper-based systems, and legacy staffing agencies. These disconnected systems have fundamental flaws. This is why they're understaffed. Our technology helps solve this issue for the healthcare system. Our monthly GMV is $280,000, and we're projected just under $1 million monthly by the end of this year. We've signed a regional contract with Common Spirit Health, and we'll continue to pursue all 150 hospitals in their system from here. Our pipeline is healthy. We're self-funded, debt-free, and profitable. Our technology helps solve this issue for the healthcare system. Our monthly GMV is $280,000, and we're projected just under $1 million monthly by the end of this year. We've signed a regional contract with Common Spirit Health, and we'll continue to pursue all 150 hospitals in their system from here. Our pipeline is healthy. We're self-funded, debt-free, and profitable. Our system translates labor demand into supply in a matter of seconds. Hospitals request labor through our web app, and our system matches those clinicians that are available and recommends the one that most closely matched the needed qualifications on over 30 dimensions. We offer integrations with timekeeping systems, ERPs, and patient records to automate this process, making a fast and easy way to match labor to census. 
We fundamentally believe that clinicians practicing at the absolute top of their license is the only way to fundamentally improve health outcomes for all people. For us here at Florence, we're pushing forward. The program helped us focus on our next product, the Florence Institute for Nursing Excellence, our new degree granting nursing school. We'll be leveraging income share agreements to democratize education and promote financial and professional growth for nurses all across the country. The school will be powered by Google Cloud and Google Classroom. We have just under 100 of our own nurses on the waiting list and are opening fall 2021. Our team is uniquely qualified to tackle this problem, and we have more than 25 years of combined healthcare leadership and clinical experience. Thank you for your time, and please do reach out to us to learn more about what we're building here at Florence. Great job, Dante, on the presentation, and great to learn about Florence. Question for you, how would you define your core product offering and how is it different from your competition? Our core value proposition is that we have transparent economics for the hospital. So we charge a flat rate per hour um, as opposed to legacy systems that charge anywhere from 35 to 60%, sometimes more uh, of that build rate. The hospitals know exactly how much we're keeping and how much is going on to the clinician. And that money is intended to incentivize the clinician to come in and take care of their patients. So our fundamental value proposition is transparency out to the hospitals. Awesome job, Florence. Up next, we have Canaries out of Dallas, Texas. Canaries is a diversity, equity, and inclusion focused SaaS platform that gives companies clear metrics to diagnose prioritize, and optimize DEI efforts. Hi, I'm Mandy Price, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Canaries. The Canary in a Coal Mine was once a mining tradition to ensure working environments were safe for workers. Coal miners carried the birds into the mines to monitor the quality of the air while they worked. A healthy bird emerging at the end of the day symbolized a workplace that was healthy and non-toxic. Similar to the way birds protected miners 30 years ago, Canaries helps organizations create inclusive workplaces and provides clear signals that foster healthy work environments. In its class ceiling index, the New York Times noted that there were more CEOs named John than the total number of female CEOs in the Fortune 500. Research has shown that a quarter of US mothers return to work after giving birth within two weeks two weeks. I remember one returning mom told me that she had to go down to her car to pump because her company didn't have a lactation room and there were no electrical outlets in the bathroom. So she would use the AC adapter in her car to pump. Companies know about the diversity of their organization. How many men, women, people of color work in various departments? But hardly any know how many of their employees are sneaking into their cars to pump or how many black employees have been asked if they got into Harvard legitimately. The Canaries platform measures all three, diversity, equity, and inclusion, because we know how important these factors are to a strong workplace. And we provide a safe, anonymous way for employees to make their voices heard. People of color are three times more likely to leave the workplace and women are twice as likely to leave the workplace due to diversity inclusion failures. Canaries helps organizations understand what's really going on inside of their organization and why they're losing the diverse talent they work so hard to achieve. Our DEI assessments will tell you if your company doesn't have enough lactation rooms or how many of your employee, employees report being questioned about their competency because of their identity. Canary sells annually renewing subscriptions to large organizations and our pricing is tiered based off the size of the organization. Subscribers are able to gain access to data on their diversity, equity, and inclusion performance. Canaries provides the transparency into corporate diversity, equity, and inclusion issues that the public craves. On our platform, you can understand what the work environment is truly like for underrepresented professionals. We also provide benchmarks to companies based on their industry, making it very clear where they fall behind in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We also provide actionable insights for companies on where they can improve. 
Canaries provides the needed insight into the experience of diverse employees within the workplace. In just two years, Canaries has grown from an idea to a technology company with major customers like AT&T and Neiman Marcus and strategic partnerships with leading national groups like Prospanica Inroads in the National Urban League. We have an amazing team and a robust board of advisors, including executives from Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, and more. We've reached more than 600,000 total users. And by the end of October, we are projected to have more than 250,000 users visit the platform this month alone. As part of the Google Accelerator for Black Founders, we've been able to completely overhaul our architecture and enhance the natural language processing, machine learning, and predictive analytics used on our platform. We're also excited to announce the launch of the Canary Score, which helps provide an objective index of corporate diversity, equity, and inclusion metrics. Our algorithm collects and analyzes numerous objective data points on almost a thousand organizations, and we're able to quantify equity inclusion within the organization. For example, we are able to provide insights that companies and typical annual engagement surveys just aren't able to assess. We look at intersectionality, neurodiversity issues, and our diversity, equity, inclusion assessments and platform provide guidance and insight on how to support these and all employees in the workplace. We are the canary in a workplace. Thank you. Awesome, very impactful work, Canary's team. A question from the audience. Would success for Canaries mean obsolescence? And would the world ever arrive at a time where equity of equity in which the score would be unnecessary? When we think about what does success for Canaries mean, and would we ever arrive at a time uh, of equity where the score would be unnecessary? Um, I don't think so, because I think when we look at the issues that we are assessing, and how the Canary score is able to look at not only employee sentiment, but objective diversity, equity, inclusion factors. It's something that organizations and us as a society will always be striving for. How can we ensure that we're meeting the need of our employees? And just like if you look at any other index as far as uh, kind of monitoring the financial status or corporate sustainability uh, initiatives that um, it's always helpful to understand where organizations stand within their market and within their industry and where we could improve. And so uh, when we think about diversity, equity, inclusion issues, um, obviously, the, you know, I think the first thing that comes to mind is um, gender and, and racial uh, kind of terms. But on the Canaries platform, we measure a host of issues. Um, uh, I briefly mentioned, you know, some of the neurodiversity issues and looking at things from an intersectionality lens. But we also look at things like parental status in uh, disability and religion. Uh, the purpose of the, the measurements and the factors that we're looking at is how are we ensuring that we're creating a workplace that um, is inclusive and equitable for all of our employees. And so when we think about kind of will that ever become obsolete, um, I think that it, it never will because uh, we will always uh, have to kind of tailor the work environment to ensure that we're optimizing it for all of our employees. And, um, you know, we look forward to, to continuously working towards achieving that equity. Thank you, Canaries. Up next, we have Lonewell out of Durham, North Carolina. Lonewell is an end-to-end -end platform for lenders with intake, origination, underwriting, closing, servicing, and reporting all in one platform. Lonewell to tell us more. What if access to capital was equitable for all? What if the ways in which we measure lending risk was fair and impartial? And what if that capital was actually affordable? My name is Bernard Worthy. I'm the CEO of Loanwell, and we're using automation software and machine learning to help create a more equitable financial world. Now, there are lots of lenders out there, but the ones specifically focused on these questions of equity are community development financial institutions, community banks, and credit unions, loan funds. But these lenders really struggle with a really manual loan origination process with many inefficient steps from applications to collecting documents 
to really long underwriting processes. And so our solution is to build an end-to-end -end platform where we automate the entire loan origination process from start to finish. And so the next time that small business applies for a loan, their tax returns can be read with optical character recognition. Their bank transaction information can be pulled in from an API. And we can offer a recommendation for underwriting based on that lender's portfolio history using machine learning algorithms that we built in the Google Accelerator. Now, this is the type of tech that this industry, the community lending industry, has been dreaming of. And if we can scale the operations of a community lender with tech, then we can scale their social impact as well. Now, the market for digital lending uh, is certainly vast, and we could grow in a lot of different ways. Uh, but if we're focused specifically on those community lenders, then our obtainable market is around 100 million in annual recurring revenue as, a, as an opportunity. And the way that that breaks down for us is with our typical B2B SaaS model, where we have a target contract value of 30 to 40,000. We have an integration free fee from 10 to 20,000. And this really results in a pretty high lifetime value, a really sticky product because we're running the operations of these lenders. And it results in many years on a contract. In terms of competition, we certainly have some, but a lot of our competitors were built 20 years ago and we are leagues ahead in terms of architecture and in building and integrating with new third-party APIs. And so we really focus on that end-to-end -end, uh, section and that's our, that's our competitive advantage. Instead of adding 10 disparate services to do one task, we have one place, a one-stop shop, and an umbrella for all the services that you might need for loan origination. Our team is absolutely amazing. We've managed banks internationally. We've built tech for Forbes and Visa. We've scaled software as a service companies from zero to 10 million in ARR, and we've exited to LinkedIn. Uh, what's most exciting though, is that we're all bought in on the vision. We're all bought in on the mission and creating a more equitable financial world. Now, in terms of growth strategy, uh, in 2020, we are focused on uh, creating this nail the niche philosophy, where we end the year with 400K in ARR. In 2021, we're really focused on doubling the deal size and creating that penetration in the market uh, such that we see larger deals and we 3X revenue. And in 2022, we're working on scaling to adjacent markets. So moving into the community bank and the credit union space, seeing a pop in that, in that ARR, and seeing a much higher deal size as well. Now, our two asks for today are connections and capital. So we'd love to be connected to community lenders uh, that are a good fit for our platform. And we'd love to be in touch with those channel partners and folks that can connect us to many. In terms of capital, we are looking to raise a seed round in Q2 and Q3 of 2021. And so mission alignment and fintech experience is something that we're really looking for. In closing, we're hoping to use software to create significant efficiency for community lenders, to create access and affordability for those small businesses and consumers in communities all over the world. And we hope you join us in that journey. Thanks. Awesome job to Loanwell. And one question from the audience for you, what is your next significant product innovation that you plan to offer to your customers that differentiate, differentiates your product from your competitors? So the next big product innovation for the LoanWell team is automating the underwriting process. I mean, we are automating so much of what we do for these lenders, but the biggest opportunity is right there um, in front of us. And we've focused on this as a part of the Google Accelerator, and it's frankly why we joined the program, uh, to really work with experts at Google to understand the intricacies of OCR, as well as the machine learning piece, uh, to understand how to best offer this uh, to our lenders uh, in our platform. And so we have some great groundwork created for that, um, and we're excited to, to launch a pilot in Q2 of next year. And so we're tackling this in four different ways. Um, if we can read documents with OCR technology using Google Cloud, then we'd be able to digitize that information and pull that information in. 
If we can pull transaction data from Plaid and other sources, uh, we can automate the bank stub requests that we often see for borrowers. If we can use credit report information uh, to come directly in uh, to your underwriting models, uh, then obviously that saves a ton of time. And lastly, if we can offer a recommendation engine based on machine learning algorithms and being trained on that lender's portfolio data itself, then it pre presents tremendous value to our customers and obviously to uh, our team in terms of sales uh, potential. So really excited about uh, that Q2 pilot and we hope coming out of that, uh, we're able to offer the product at full release by the end of the year. Congratulations to the Lonewell team. And last but not least before intermission, we have MedHall. MedHall is based out of Memphis, Tennessee, and is a tech-enabled marketplace for finding and booking safe, skilled special needs transportation. On to MedHall. Hi, I'm Erica Plavier, founder of MedHall, where we believe that everyone deserves safe, reliable, and efficient transportation to care, regardless of special need. Before MedHall, I spent eight years in clinical and research informatics, building software solutions for some of the biggest names in healthcare, like Google Ventures backed Flatiron Health and St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. So think about my surprise and frustration when I couldn't find an easy way to transport my grandmother, who was a type two diabetic, double leg amputee, without lifting her in and out of our family vehicle, which wasn't wheelchair accessible. I knew there had to be a better way to find and book complex, personalized transportation. And I also found that millions of people across our country face this same problem. Actually about 197 million people, that's about 60% of our population have a chronic illness that requires daily or weekly doctor's appointments. And about a third of those miss their appointments due to transportation barriers like not having a car, the appropriate type of vehicle, or money to pay for public transportation. And these are critical appointments we're talking about. So think about a cancer patient missing their chemo appointment or someone with kidney failure who can't make it to dialysis. These patients, like my grandmother, can't just drive themselves often. And they can't also can't take public transportation, especially now with the pandemic. If these patients miss these appointments, they often end up calling 911 and going to the emergency room for what should have been a routine visit. These missed appointments and the misuse of emergency services are really hurting our healthcare system, creating an avoidable expense of over $180 billion per year. Hospitals and insurance providers have tried to find suitable solutions for these patients, but their methods for doing so are so outdated and inefficient, requiring long phone calls and stacks of paper. And the thing is, these patients still continue to miss their appointments and healthcare providers are still losing time and money. My grandmother, these patients, and our healthcare providers deserve better. So we created MedHall, a tech-enabled marketplace that makes it easy to find and book high-quality special needs transportation. In just a few simple clicks, we connect nursing staff directly with transportation partners who specialize in door-through-door -door transport for patients with complex needs such as wheelchair, stretcher, or isolation. Our technology also captures additional unique information. So does the patient own a wheelchair or will they need one? Are there stairs in or outside of the home? Ensuring we connect these patients with the best transportation provider for their needs. And on the back end, we also use machine learning to provide reporting and insights to our customers and transportation partners and to improve our ride matching capabilities. Our team knows the population that MedHall is built to serve. We have over 50 years of combined experience in healthcare technology, operations, data analytics, and product management. We've successfully led over $700 million worth of complex projects for world-renowned healthcare institutions and Fortune 500 companies. And we built tech products from the ground up for successful startups. We're the right team to transform this massive special needs transportation industry. Honestly, other companies have tried to tackle various, trans various transportation challenges, but MedHall is the first to build a solution that focuses on personalized, complex transport and vulnerable communities. Healthcare providers tell us they prefer working with MedHall because of our simple, predictable subscription business model, our unique vetting process for finding transportation providers, and the wide variety of accessibility options that are offered on our platform. The medical transportation market is huge and rapidly growing. 
The U.S. market is estimated at 21 billion and expected to grow to 31 billion due to the growing baby boomer population. MedHall is targeting the $10.3 billion non-emergency medical transportation market, and we're getting there first by targeting specialty groups like dialysis and cancer centers in the 11 southeastern states. And we've done quite a bit to get there. Since our formal launch in 2019, we've already secured four enterprise customers and facilitated over 7,000 rides on our platform. We saved our largest customer almost $2 million within their first year, and we're not stopping there. We're looking to expand our impact, targeting 200 enterprise clients and over half a million rides and $80 million ARR by 2025. We have a big mission, and we can't do this alone. We're extremely honored to be backed by Morgan Stanley, Inova Memphis, and most recently, the Google for Startups Black Founders Fund. We're looking for additional, additional partners to help us refine our technology, grow our transportation network, and reach 110K MRR by December 2021. I started MedHall to build the transportation solution I wish was available for my grandmother, and now I'm driven to scale our company to impact the hundreds of millions of families across America who need our help. Thank you. Thank you, Erica and the Hall team. Question from the audience. Do you own your vehicles and is your plan to grow your own fleet or, and, or do ride share services like Uber and Lyft fit into MedHall's future business model? And how could they contrast or complement MedHall in terms of target users, revenue generation, et cetera? Yeah, that's actually a really great question. Um, we don't own our own fleet. Uh, our vision is to keep an asset light model. Uh, we really want to be the technology partner that makes life easier for uh, the transportation providers in our network who already own fleets of underutilized specialty vehicles. So no, we don't plan to grow our own fleet. Metal was actually designed specifically for special and unique needs, but really our goal is also to provide a wide range of accessibility options for our riders. So Uber or Lyft could make a great partner for us for basic ride sharing needs. And then on the other end, we also partner with transportation companies that have drivers who are trained um, specifically to operate wheelchairs and stretchers or assisted rides that may require helping a patient in and out of a car, up the, up the stairs, through their door and inside of their home. So yes, I absolutely think that they could make a great partner for us. Thanks to the Med Hall team for a great presentation. Um, and without further ado, we'll head over to intermission um, and be back in five minutes.
Welcome back. We're excited to kick off the second half of our demo day. First up, we have MindRight Health based out of Newark, New Jersey. And for those wanting to know more, MindRight Health provides culturally responsive mental health coaching over text messages to communities of color and low income families. Hi, my name is Ashley Edwards, and I am the founder and CEO of MindRight Health. MindRight was built out of a deep understanding of how systemic injustice impacts the mental health outcomes of underserved communities. We do this work because we're aware that we are currently living in a mental health crisis. This is not just because of the pandemic. Even before COVID-19, suicide rates and drug overdoses were higher than ever, which has caused the largest drop in American life expectancy in the past hundred years. And even though trauma disproportionately impacts underserved communities, we see that these communities are less likely to seek mental health care due to stigma. And when they do seek treatment, they're more likely to receive poor quality care. This inequity has only been exacerbated during COVID-19. This comes at a huge cost to healthcare payers. There's four times higher Medicaid spending on mental health and over 45 billion lost annually in work productivity due to anxiety and depression. This market not only has the highest need, but the greatest opportunity. The market for mental health technologies is projected to reach 4 billion by 2025. And the majority of self-insured employers plan to offer telehealth as a covered benefit. At MindRight, we see where the market is going and we are a part of the opportunity for payers to invest in. So given the urgency in the market, we asked ourselves, how can we reimagine mental health care to meet the untapped market needs of a rapidly diversifying country? We prioritize designing a solution for the most marginalized communities, which uniquely enables us to create a product that can transform access to care for everyone. That's why we created MindRight. We know that younger generations live on their phone, so we're meeting people where they are. We provide culturally responsive mental health coaching over text message. Our service is non-clinical and provides unparalleled access to support by offering our coaching seven days a week, 365 days a year. Here's how it works. To sign up, all one of our members has to do is text us. There's no app. Once they sign up, they pick a time where they like to speak with their coaches every day. Every day, we're proactively checking in with members on good days and bad to provide strategies to overcome challenges. And all of our coaching conversations are supervised by licensed clinicians who provide guidance and support if there are ever any escalated or crisis situations. Our partners receive access to our real-time aggregated data on conversation insights via our dashboard so that they can identify trends in member well-being over time. With Google support, we're applying NLP on our text data sets to scale our human-driven service and eventually create predictive algorithms so that we can prevent mental health crises in our communities. And so far, we've seen strong engagement from our users. Each month, we're receiving roughly 13,000 incoming text messages for, for every 100 users, and we're retaining users for over eight months on average of our daily texting service. For our go-to-market, we're targeting healthcare payers, from Medicaid MCOs to self-insured corporations, and we already have some traction. Within months of launching our company last summer, we secured a pilot partnership with AmeriHealth, the largest Medicaid plan in Washington, D.C., to provide MindRight as a preventative behavioral health support for their members at monthly subscription pricing of $60 per active member per month. Given the success of that pilot, AmeriHealth has expressed interest in expanding this partnership to other states. Through one potential Medicaid expansion alone, we can expect to reach over 120K in monthly recurring revenue in the next several months. We know we have the right team to do this job. We have combined expertise in clinical social work, healthcare, data science, and we've been recognized by Forbes during year under 30. We're also advised by Dr. Ostrowski, the former chief medical officer of US Medicaid. We're really excited to share that we recently closed our oversubscribed million dollar pre-seed round. Forbes announced this past month that this raise makes me the first black woman to raise over 1 million in Vice venture capital in the state of New Jersey and one of only 35 who have ever done so in the US. 
As we continue to drive our growth, we welcome connections with investors to stay updated on our work until our next raise. We're also looking for introductions to payers and school districts, as well as technical advisors with experience in NLP and DevOps. In closing, one of our members told us, I used to fear that I would be lonely, but now with Mindrite, I have this backup and I no longer have to fear being alone. We do this work so that more people feel less alone. We invite you to join us. Thank you. Congratulations to Ashley and the Mindrite Health team. Question from the audience for you. Who exactly are your coaches and how do you ensure quality and trust between your coaches and your customers? So for our coaches, we pull from two main groups. The first group are social workers. We have partnerships with schools of social work where we have social workers and graduate degree programs who coach with us in exchange for credit to get their social work degrees. And then we also recruit community coaches, those who live in the neighborhoods and communities that we serve who have shared lived experiences as our members. All of our coaches, whether they're social workers or community coaches, they're all supervised by licensed clinicians when they're coaching and they all go through our intensive coach training process. And our coach training process includes background checks, vetting, role plays, et cetera. And if there's ever any issues or escalations with members in crisis, that is when our licensed clinicians take over the conversations from our coaches and ensure that members connected to needed um, referrals or resources. That was a wonderful presentation by the MindRight Health team. Shifting gears, we have Shearshare up next based out of McKinney, Texas. Shearshare is the first mobile marketplace for stylists to manage and grow their small businesses on their terms, starting with a space to work. Traditional salons and barber shops were already moving towards disruption before COVID-19. Today, four out of five have empty space that goes unused. I know, because my co-founder and I are former salon owners, and this was a problem we were just trying to solve for ourselves. Hi, my name is Courtney Caldwell, and together with my co-founder, Dr. Ty, we're the creators of Shearshare. Shearshare is the first B2B mobile app that connects salon and barbershop owners to individual stylists to fill their empty salon space by the day. Salon and barbershop owners get brand new revenue from an underused asset and stylists get the freedom and flexibility of accessing affordable, professional space to work when and where they need it. Back in 2012, we expanded our salon and found that stylists weren't looking to rent our space long term. Instead, we started to receive phone calls from stylists wanting to rent our suites by the day. Now, why this is so very odd is because since 1916, the way that stylists find professional space to work hasn't changed. You cold call until you find a home salon, sign a long-term contract, and then work out of that same chair for one, five, 10 years or more. But we decided to give it a try and soon found ourselves manually matching stylists to empty salon space for three years before we looked for a solution, couldn't find one, and decided to build out the technology ourselves. Here's how it works. You type in a city and hit go. You select your day or days of the week you'd like to work, license specialty, workspace type, and a whole host of amenities like free Wi-Fi and parking, cable TV, wheelchair accessibility, the list goes on. Once you find a match, you simply type in your credit card information and literally book salon space to work like you book a hotel room. It's that easy. During Google for Startups, we've worked with an augmented team to uncover that price sensitivity is paramount, regardless of location, regardless of pandemic. In fact, 70% of share sharers say that price is a key factor in decision making, with 50% ranking price as very important. After a test in our top three markets, we realized that in some cases, there was a 31% price difference between what stylists expected to pay versus how a host priced their listing. So to help both sides of the marketplace maximize their earnings potential, we built out dynamic pricing. And as you saw in the video, Shearshare Share is not just for hairstylists and barbers. Every licensed specialty within cosmetology finds space to work on the Shearshare Share app. Nail technicians, makeup artists, estheticians, massage therapists. And today, Shearshare Share is the largest provider of on-demand salon and barbershop space rentals with more than $47 million in assets under management. We also have the most affordable leases in the market, but this is just the beginning. There's a seismic shift happening in our industry. The good news is that Shear Share is already ahead of the revolution. 
more stylists are choosing to become independent contractors, 70% in fact. Stylists are increasingly becoming location agnostic, choosing to build their personal brands on Instagram and YouTube. They wanna get closer to their clientele and manage their own book of business, but without being tied down to a long-term lease contract. More importantly, no matter how independent the stylist, they will tell you that the salon is where they do their best work because the salon is where they were classically trained. In the same way that Uber and Lyft first served as the intermediary between the driver and passenger, and today are completely revolutionizing an entire transportation and logistics industry, Shearshare will be that for beauty. We launched our public beta in September 2017, and since then have been growing 15% month over month. Hosts and stylists love us once they find us. That's because we're helping to keep their small businesses open. Empty salon chairs represent over $16 billion a year in opportunity revenue every single year. The average price on the ShareShare app is $89 a day. And because we take a 25% commission on each ShareShare booking, our total estimated revenue over the next three years is north of $260 million. My co-founder has 26 years in beauty earned his doctorate degree in professional barbering and cosmetology, and is a number one best-selling author on how to achieve long-term success in the beauty and style industry. My background is 21 years in B2B technology marketing. I used to run Oracle's digital strategy and innovations group worldwide and had PL across five continents. Shearshare, our app is the first of its kind that lets stylists rent space to work by the day in cities all over the world. More importantly, we're the greatest engine of jobs and wealth creation for beauty and barbering professionals. We're growing 15% month over month, 65% of users rebook, and our strategic partnerships will help us define the future of work for the salon industry worldwide. Thank you. Here at Google, we're excited for the work that you all are doing at Shearshare. Question for you, how has COVID-19 impacted your business? Yes, well, you know, COVID-19 hit everybody pretty hard, right? Um, in our instance, revenues did go to zero, but because beauty and barbering has fed our family for 30 years now, we remember what it was like to be in the industry and going through Y2K and Ebola and the 2007, 2008 recession. And so we knew it was just a matter of time before things started to spin back up. Um, instead of looking inwardly and telling ourselves, oh, woe is me, the sky is falling, we instead turned our sights outwards and just started asking our community of stylists and salon and barbershop owners, how can we be the most helpful to you right now in this, in this moment? And they said, well, hey, you know, I keep hearing about this thing called PPP and EIDL. Um, and so we started to help them transition portions of their business to an e-commerce model. We actually opened up a virtual beauty supply store on the app, whereby if a stylist has an independent product that's pretty popular and they can't you know, go into a Walmart or Target and get shelf space from day one, they can put that on the ShareShare platform and have access to the tens of thousands of stylists who use the app on a daily basis. Um, in addition to that, we created more than 100 pieces of business content to help industry professionals grow and manage their businesses, but from behind the chair. Uh, in addition to that, uh, PPP and EIDL, I'm so very proud to say that we helped more than 125 stylists and salon and barbershop owners who had originally been denied PPP actually get approved for it. Thank you, Share Share. Up next, we have TQ Intelligence out of Atlanta, Georgia. TQ Intelligence uses voice recognition technology and artificial intelligence to measure toxic stress and transform trauma care. If you're a child or adolescent from low-income communities in the United States, getting access to quality mental health care is almost near impossible. And it has only gotten worse in the last decade when in fact there has been a 76% increase and the suicide rate for African-American youth alone. This increase in mental illness burden and suicidality is directly related to the lack of access to quality affordable mental health care. Whether you receive quality mental health care is predicted by your zip code. Youth from low-income communities covered by Medicare-based health plan consistently lack access to quality mental health services. One reason is the lack of highly trained mental health practitioners. Children from low-income families are treated by therapists who are the least qualified. 
in the current system of care, everyone loses. The patient, the mental health provider, the payer. It leads to poor treatment outcomes for patients, lost opportunity, increased liability for providers, and the low profit for the Medicare managed care health plans. My name is Yare Dalam, and I've been studying this topic my entire life. I know a thing or two about being poor. I'm a psychologist by training, and I have a purpose-built team where we have the intersection of technologists and mental health experts to solve this conundrum. And our solution is called Clarity AI. Clarity AI brings communication and coordination in real time with the state-of-the-art voice-based algorithm and machine learning to augment the therapist's subjective measurement of severity. The outcomes tracking brings enormous efficiency to care coordination between pair and therapist. In short, our voice biomarkers technology augment lower skill therapists with smart diagnostic and workflow. Clarity AI gets the data where it is needed faster to improve quality at a lower cost. Our commitment to use from low income communities is not simply a charity mission. There is a giant revenue generating machine in the US when it comes to delivering mental health care. Even minor efficiency gains across patients, insurers, and healthcare providers would unlock massive profits, and this market is growing. We already have a pipeline of late stage opportunities, even though we have raised very little capital. But today alone, we have a contract negotiation underway with the Medicare Managed Care Plan, Amerigroup, which is a division of Anthem. This opportunity to sell our technology to Amerigroup, Georgia, could potentially open the door for Amerigroup services in seven different state-sponsored program across the country. Amerigroup's strategic plan to invest in innovative platform to enable its care coordinators to engage with therapists in real time aligns with Clarity AI. We have as many as three total opportunities in our pipeline and feel confident that this year alone, we will have 20,000 enrolled patients and $300,000 in revenue and growing to upwards of 50,000 patients next year and a 2 million in revenue. We have also raised more than $200,000 in early stage funding, coupled with another $350,000 of non-dilutive grant and cash awards, including a $10,000 funding from Google recently. We expect to win the phase one grant from the National Science Foundation for $1 million in the second quarter of 2021. We are currently seeking 1.5 million to fill our first customer launches, initial go to market and improve the voice algorithm accuracy. Finally, we're not alone in this market. People are recognizing how big of an opportunity this is. Innovation in mental health care is no longer exotic. When we speak to health care providers to sell our services, there are roughly five companies that come up. What distinguishes us from these companies that we are developing a solution in an emerging science of speech and motion recognition. And we have built the data infrastructure to collect and scale the collection of clinical voice samples. We have already collected more than 700 voice samples and rapidly growing. Thank you. Great job to TQ Intelligence. And it's always great to see a team from my hometown town of Atlanta. Question for you. How will you minimize instances of bias in your assessment as they predict the severity of pediatric emotional and behavioral disorders? Traditionally, whenever there is a, an algorithms developed uh, to identify um, something very specific. Uh, it is developed uh, in majority um, Caucasian samples and then see if they can be generalized to um, people from low resource communities or people of color. We actually do in the reverse, that we're actually developing the algorithm within the sample of, <clears throat> um, uh, of children are less than from low resource communities. Um, uh, and so, so we address the bias by making sure that our sample is representative to the population that we're focusing on. 
and a wonderful presentation by TQ Intelligence team. Great job. Next up, we have Upswing based out of Austin, Texas. Upswing partners with colleges and universities to reverse the dropout rate of online and non-traditional students. Upswing to tell us more. Hi, my name is Melvin Hines and I'm co-founder and CEO of Upswing. Here at Upswing, we're on a mission to end attrition. And what I mean by that is that our entire focus is on supporting the 6.6 million non-traditional students who are attending college every single year. Now, these students aren't your typical 18 to 22 year old on-campus students. They are student parents, they're adult learners, they're online students, and, and they're first generation students. And their enrollment is increasing at a faster rate than the on-campus traditional peers. Unfortunately, they're also dropping out at twice the rate as their peers as well, causing them to be saddled with thousands of dollars in student loan debt and schools to lose out on millions of dollars in lost tuition. Now, we believe that the reason for this is because they just simply don't have access to the key critical resources to stay in school. Things like tutors and advisors and counselors. They can't go up to their professor after class and ask a question. And that's really where we come in. Here at Upswing, we are the hub that connects students to everything that they need in order to thrive. We provide mental health services. We provide access to those advisors, counselors, tutors. We provide the office hours. And what we found is that if we can just engage students just three times over the course of their semester, their likelihood of persisting actually increases by 10%, saving colleges on average $300,000 annually in lost tuition. And we've been able to do that time and time again. Since starting Upswing, we prevented over 50,000 students from dropping out of college. And every single month, we're adding another 1,000 students to that number. Here's just one example here. Back in March, at the height of the beginning of COVID, uh, FAFSA was becoming due. And so we wanted to remind students to fill out their FAFSA application uh, before starting their fall 2020 enrollment. Well, one student in particular replied back to our virtual assistant, Anna, and said, hey, I already applied for my FAFSA, but I'm gonna go ahead and drop out of college anyway. And so Anna was able to reply back and ask, you know, what's going on? What's the reason for this? And, and the student just unloaded a litany of just experiences that have been happening to her. Number one, uh, she was an on-campus student who suddenly had to become remote because of COVID. Number two, she had kids, three kids who were all in K-12 and they suddenly were uh, remote as well and she didn't have enough laptops. And number three, she had just gotten in a car accident recently and that car was the only way that she was able to go to work and suddenly she wasn't able to support her family. She felt like there were no resources available for her, and so she should just go ahead and quit. Well, there are support tools. She just didn't know where to connect with them, and that's where Upswing was able to help support her. We were able to provide a laptop to her so that she could get the help that she, that she needed uh, through her admin. We were able to connect her in with her professors uh, so that they could help her with her coursework and help her get back on track. And we were able to provide her with encouraging words all throughout this time period to let her know that she can succeed and she can do it. Well, three weeks later, she reached back out to our virtual assistant, Anna, and she said, I took all three of my exams and made two 100s and a 98. Thank you so much. You were heaven sent. When I started having trouble, you started texting me and didn't even know. I would have dropped out if it wasn't for you. So thank you with all my heart. Well, these are the types of conversations that we have here at Upswing every single day. In fact, we've had over 600,000 of these conversations just since COVID began. And by the way, our services are completely free to all students. Because we partner directly with the colleges to help them to grow their tuition revenue and just take a small fraction of that, we're able to continually provide these services to students without them having to pay a cent. Today, we generate over $2 million in ARR annually. And we're starting with a niche of community colleges and minority serving institutions, which is about a $23 billion market. But moving forward, we see ourselves being able to expand to support all colleges, as well as high schools. 
And that's why we're raising our Series A today. Today, we're looking to raise a $5 million Series A round, which will help us to be able to grow our services for more students and provide an even greater impact. If you're interested, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is melvin at upswing.io. My name is Melvin Hines, and we're Upswing, and we're on a mission to end attrition. Thank you. Awesome work, Upswing. And I know that university students and college students are tremendously impacted by the awesome work that you all are doing. Uh, question for you, COVID-19 has deeply impacted the education system. How is, how is COVID-19 a challenge for Upswing and how has it been an opportunity? So how has COVID impacted uh, Upswing? I think this is a really good question. So back in March, was the beginning of the COVID sort of pandemic for education where colleges were beginning to close down their campuses, were beginning to move online, um, were beginning to think about how were they going to support all of their students, not just some of their online students in a remote environment. It was around that time that we really began to see huge increases in terms of the demand that was happening on our platform. In fact, our demand increased 300% just from the end of February to the end of March and kept increasing from there. Uh, suddenly we had to make sure that we had uh, enough server capacity, that we had enough uh, people to support the institutions and what have you. So it was certainly a, a big challenge because our team itself also had to move remote at that point in time, but it was a huge opportunity as well because for years we've been trying to let institutions know that the type and quality of experience that online and non-traditional students were having was so dramatically different from the experience of the on-campus peers. And because all of a sudden everyone was an online student, they finally, you know, it clicked for them, they got it. And so what we've seen since then is people wanting to have more of a dialogue. They've been asking us, what are the best ways to engage students remotely? What are the tactics that you've seen that has worked? And what are the things that are creating the greatest barriers to students succeeding? And we've been able to package that and capitalize on providing that to various colleges and help them with thinking through their strategies, not just in the short-term period of COVID, but long-term as well to create more of a long-term viability. Really proud of your team and the work that you all are doing. Up next, we have WeatherCheck based out of Louisville, Kentucky. WeatherCheck monitors and measures weather damage to help insurance carriers reduce their overall claims expense. WeatherCheck to tell us more. Hi, I'm Demetrius Gray, co-founder and CEO of WeatherCheck. I spent almost 10 years chasing severe weather events around the United States, uh, resulting in me seeing almost 4,000 insurance claims throughout the United States. And you know what? A lot of people had this same sort of issue is they would encounter a severe weather event and they would ask the question, you know what, what's the condition of my roof? Should I file a loss? Should I take a specific action? Inevitably, we have left that solution specifically to our insurance agents and carriers. And when you ask your agent, hey, what should I do? Should I file this loss or not? Um, today, they say, you know what, I don't know. That's principally why we created WeatherCheck, so that folks could actually have a reputable source, an empirical source of truth, when trying to decide whether or not they should take an action up against a severe weather event. Uh, it's the first place online that you can search any address in the continental United States and know exactly what severe weather events have impacted you. And now, enabling your insurance agent, broker, carrier, mortgage company, realtor, whomever, to know exactly what severe weather events have actually had a major impact on a property. Now that has resulted in carriers throughout the country and brokers enabling people to know, hey, here's what my overall risk is and here's how resilient I really am as it relates to hailstorms, windstorms, tornadoes, hurricanes, we know those events. But more importantly, putting credible data at the fingertips of every single person involved in an asset specifically your home or commercial property, where you really need to know exactly what you should do next. 
what action you should be taking. But even bigger than that, it's giving you some a bit real empirical data to say, here's what I should um, do as a result, right? So overall damage probability. We think it's very likely that you have had a severe weather event. And oh, and by the way, here's how likely your particular carrier is to pay a claim. Now, we do this with a great partnership network when we don't have enough data to have drones come to your asset and get more information. Um, and then even more importantly, we then actually finance the approved loss from your carrier, empowering you to speed up the overall claims process and make decisions more quickly. People ask us all the time, well, how do you do all this? Well, today we use a lot of different data sources, um, all of that being factored into our own proprietary algorithms that then result in what actions should we be taking? And we're using Google Cloud to help us do that. And those actions include things like, yes, I should file a claim, or I should move my car in the garage, or I should evacuate. All of this gets you to the point of being more prepared before the storm, empowering your insured, your mortgagees, your individual property owners to take additional steps to actually get to a better result ultimately resulting in faster claims, faster FNOL, and actually avoiding claims that shouldn't be filed at all. Now we've had great partners who have already signed up to use WeatherCheck in their business every single day. And those include some of the biggest names in insurance and mortgage um, in corporate America to help us make the world 100% weather resilient. Now, the way we make money is super simple, $125 per user per month, and that's what we charge our brokers or enterprise users, but then we take 10 to 20% of every single claim filed um, on the weather check application. Now we've built this uh, with my great co-founder, uh, been coding since the age of 14, Jermaine Watkins, and spent time at companies like Young Brands while I was building construction companies. Um, we're uh, joined by a team of 13 other individuals um, in atmospheric physics and meteorology, civil engineering, developers who are really helping to build this 21st century solution. Now, at our core, our mission is to find valid severe weather claims and streamline the overall disaster recovery process, making the world 100% weather resilient. Today, we have almost three and a half million dollars in sales and almost 219 firms on the platform using WeatherCheck in their business every single day and deploying that to their property owners or their, the folks that they represent. Now, that's WeatherCheck. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Great job, Demetrius and WeatherCheck. Uh, question for you. Can you speak a bit more about how externalities impact your sales cycle? How do major recent events such as the California wildfires impact your sales process and sales cycle? So specifically, those externalities inevitably make people more sensitive. Um, and it's oftentimes not in the exact moment, but directly thereafter. After uh, a carrier or an insured or an agent or broker or mortgage company even, after they finish resolving um, the loss of life that may have occurred or loss of property, uh, then they start thinking, what can I do to remedy this in the future? And inevitably, uh, weather check comes up in that conversation um, as a way to help people manage through what uh, Mother Nature throws their way. Lastly, we have Zero Storefront based out of San Mateo, California. Zero Storefront uses data analytics to help small businesses acquire users, increase revenue, and retain their customers. On to the founders of Zero Storefront to tell us more about how they do so. Hi, my name is Colin Wallace. This is Ashutosh Joshi. We are the co-founders of Zero Storefront. The Zero Storefront is a customer acquisition and retention platform that's purpose-built for local restaurants. So if you're a restaurant owner and you wanna understand where your customers are coming from and how to find more of them, we make that possible. Now, it probably won't surprise you to know that restaurants are dying at an astounding rate. However, they're not dying because they don't have quality products to sell. They're dying because they don't have customers consistently buying from them. The restaurant business has changed as a result of digitization. And what used to be a simple relationship with a customer that simply walked through your doors 
now takes place across dozens of online and offline applications. The local restaurant or boutique that serves your, your neighborhood is now competing with dozens of businesses that are literally just a click away. And for restaurant owners, if you weren't in the e-commerce business before COVID-19, you sure as heck are now. And all of these changes have left restaurants struggling to survive, despite employing over 8% of the employees in our economy and generating almost a trillion dollars of sales every year. Now today, if you're a restaurant owner, there's a good chance that your business takes place on Yelp, TripAdvisor, Google, Facebook. You're taking orders from DoorDash, from Grubhub, from Uber Eats. You might have a smart Wi-Fi, customers phoning in orders, or even receiving orders via email for catering requests or birthday parties. We connect all of those systems and identify the customer, centralizing that customer data. From there, we can measure attribution so we understand where the customers are coming from and then automate workflows, including customer acquisition. And here's how it works. Important brand interactions like customer reviews are gathered from dozens of sources and collected here for analysis and coordinated response. Inbound phone calls are tracked and automatically added to your customer list and custom audiences within Google and Facebook. And within your customer list, you can see every customer that has ever interacted with your brand across all of your applications. For example, Elsie Robel, we can see from her data that her first interaction with the brand was an inbound phone call. She then placed an order that was processed through the square point of sale. Now, instantaneously, her information and her attributes are segmented and added to the correct audience for Google Ads. A week later, she engaged with one of those Google Ads, prompting her to sign up for our loyalty program through Patronix. And later, she saw a promotion to order via DoorDash and decided to place a delivery order. Now, because of the zero storefront platform, not only is she able to redeem her Patronix loyalty credits on DoorDash, zero storefront is able to track the entire journey in real time. And through this example, you can see the power of not only collecting and centralizing your customer data, but the incredible opportunity that automation represents in transforming restaurants. And it's already working. With our first pilot customer, Frank Pepe's Pizzeria, an 11 unit chain, Zero Storefront identified over 120,000 unique customers in less than eight weeks. And we add another thousand every single night. This month, we estimate that targeting this list of customers will generate over $200,000 of incremental sales for this customer alone. Now we make money through a monthly SaaS fee and a percentage of transactions that leverage our automated workflows. So every month we collect a small SaaS fee from each customer, and every time a customer uses one of our automations to generate incremental revenue, we get paid. Now, small business workflow automation is a big business. There are more than a million active restaurants in the US alone, and this represents a TAM of $3.6 billion per year with our current SaaS pricing, plus an additional 4 billion a year when you include our profit share. Now we're the right team to build this vision because we've been innovating in this space for over a decade. Prior to this, I was the head of innovation at Grubhub and my co-founder Ashutosh Joshi ran the restaurant facing technology team at Grubhub as well. We are Zero Storefront and we help restaurants automate customer acquisition and retention. We're an experienced team with previous exits to Grubhub and eClub. We have a SaaS model with strong network effects and there are opportunities for profit sharing. Our first pilot customer generated over 120,000 customer profiles in less than eight weeks, and they'll use those profiles to generate over $200,000 of revenue this month. To learn more about us, visit us at zerostorefront.com. Thanks so much. Excited to see you close out our presentations today, Zero Storefront. Uh, question for you. Uh, 2020, of course, was a tough year for small businesses. How do you prove to small business owners that investment in storefront at a time when many are struggling to keep doors open is a worthwhile investment? Yeah, so unlike most platforms, uh, one thing that's really unique about Zero Storefront is you actually have the ability to attribute all of your sales, right? So it's not a question of guessing about where your customers are coming from or how much value or revenue they're generating from you. We actually have the ability to measure it. 
So when you think about the investment that we're asking small businesses to make in bringing zero storefront into their organization um, and making it part of their technology stack, we're doing that with the knowledge that we're going to be able to show them the ROI on every single dollar, whether it's through Google, whether it's through Facebook, whether it's through the telephone, whether it's through DoorDash, we can literally give them the data on what channels are net positive and generating value for them and what channels are not. And so if there's an investment you're going to make as a small business, when every dollar counts, Zero Storefront's one of the best options that, that you have because it's literally going to tell you what's working and what's not working and let you do more of that. Thanks, Colin and team, for a great presentation and for closing out our demo day. And that's a wrap. On behalf of Google and everyone who made this program possible, I just want to say a tremendous thank you. Thank you to our 12 startups, the awesome Black founders behind them, and their amazing teams for joining our program and presenting today. Thank you to our viewers for supporting these founders and their companies and tuning in. Thank you to Googlers for all the mentorship and support that you provided over the last 10 weeks and, and beyond. Thank you to our partners for the work that you do in the ecosystem. And finally, a call to action to our viewers. What can you do to support our entrepreneurs and other Black founders around the world? Well, take the initiative to check out these and other Black-led startups, learn about them, visit their websites, and reach out to set up a conversation. To investors, our founders would love to continue the conversation with you. To partners, our founders would love to connect with you. To future customers, visit their websites and check out their awesome products. And to allies, spread the word on this demo day. It will stay on demand and it's not too late to watch and support and share the love across the ecosystem. And interested in connecting to our founders, reach out. They're interested in connecting with you as well. And finally, a tremendous congratulations to the startups and their teams for all of the hard work that they've put in over the last 10 weeks and what they've been able to accomplish and what they will continue to accomplish over the next five to 10 years. Thank you and congratulations.